And good morning. It is 18 minutes after 9 o'clock. And joining us in the studio this morning from the New Mexico Shooting Sports Association, John Thosen, back with us. Morning, John. Hey, Mike. How are you today? Glad uh, you get to spend some time with us. And uh, how's life treating you? Real good. Good. Just celebrated my 50th wedding anniversary, so I got Andrea beat by a few years. Got her beat by a few <laughs> years. So so it's got to be real comfortable by 50. She's clearly comfortable at 20, 22. <laughs> by 50, it should be very comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hope so. Congratulations <laughs> Thank to you. you and your spouse you. there. So, and. This man has firearms, so you know it worked out well. <laughs> she didn't have to shoot him at any time in that point of 50 She years. does, too, though. <laughs> oh, okay. So she need her own firearm. Yeah, she'd argue who has the most. But. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I guess, you know, we've talked about this before, but I, maybe we should start uh, kind of give the precursor. Give folks, uh, I think they kind of can figure out what you do with the shooting sports side, but but give a little bit of background and a little okay. bit of uh, information about the, the New Mexico Shooting Sports Association. Okay, uh, the net, I'm the district director for this area, and the New Mexico Shooting Sports Association was founded in 1935. We are an NRA-approved or sanctioned state event. Okay. Our job is to protect your rights and all shooters' rights in the legislative session, but we also try to make people aware and help with shooting sports all over the state. Sure, Different, you education know, and, and education, promotion of Trap of shooting, sport. lessons, and this and that. And as you know, we were able to greatly help defeat every single anti-gun bill that was up before the legislative session last time. Uh, I'm not saying we did it by ourselves, but we were greatly involved. We, uh, we testified before every single event. We educated people on bills. Uh, we created talking points and everything else, and we were successful. But the problem is that took just about all of our funds because of COVID, sure. Of course, we couldn't have our fundraising event this year, so, so you got to deplete. You got to re re uh, refill the coffers here to continue the exactly. fight. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm asking people: if you aren't already a member of New Mexico Shooting Sports Association, please join. Help us fight for your rights. Uh, you can join at our website, New Mexico Shooting Sports Association org. And we also started a new thing. Larry's Gun Shop here locally helped us with our first month. We're having a. We're going to raffle a gun every month. Nice. Uh, we had a real nice Ruger AR-15 that was drawn yesterday. A lady from Chaparral, New Mexico, won it. Nice. And Congratulations to her. I know. I was hoping, but <laughs> I never win anything. Yeah, you always, it's always. Uh, you always like, oh man. I, I think you have to. You have to put a mindset that you don't want it, and like trick your brain into not wanting it, and then it's going to happen. Ooh, I'll try that. But that's going to be hard with a gun. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that to my uh, mind. Well, but. that's why it's really hard. But if you can achieve it, there is success on the other side. No, I hope so. But anyway, we did real well with that first raffle. And we'd like to say we've got another one up starting today. Okay. I believe it's an AR pistol. Or, I mean, a, yeah, AR-223 pistol style. Okay. So very good. Now, now to get uh, registered for uh, to chance to win this firearm, what's the best way to do that? Just go on our website. New Mexico Shooting Sports Association dot org. And the okay. great thing about this is is you can do everything electronically. You can okay. buy your tickets. They're electronically sent to you in nice. return. The drawing is live. We had a live drawing yesterday for this first gun, like I said. And cool. it's real simple. Excellent. So, so get on there, go to the website and sign up. And then like you said, this is gonna happen every week. Every month. Every month, I'm sorry, for a while here. So yeah. um, you know, uh, this will be the September drawing here. Then tune back in in October for for the new one here. Actually, and, that was the August drawing oh, yesterday. So this is September. So we'll we're start. starting a new one today, and and like I say, we're going to try to keep it going, and hopefully, we'll have one a month from now on as as a fundraising event. So support us. We're out there fighting for you. Excellent, absolutely, and 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 like you said, this is this is uh, this is the way that you guys are, you know, getting the money together, getting to reestablish the 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 because you know. They're not done. They're going to oh, keep. No. They're going to keep. Uh, they're going to keep proposing uh, things in 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 the legislature they are. that that are going to be a problem, and they're going to impose upon our rights that we need to uh, you know raise awareness and call to the carpet. And and obviously, like you said, you, your organization here with the New Mexico Shooting Sports Association, obviously they're they're doing their part on the legislative side, and and like you said, with others. Hell, I imagine that you probably work hand in hand with the sheriffs' association and other law enforcement and other agencies that are fighting the same fight you are exactly. uh, there in Santa Fe. Too, exactly. So. Yeah, it's uh, we, you're right. They've already talked about uh, next legislative session. We already know some of the things to expect. They're going to try to pass what they're calling Benny's law. 
Uh, and that is in regard to the shooting that happened in Albuquerque. Okay. So they're going to try to pass mandates, mandated storage laws. So they're going to break into your home essentially and tell you what you can do in your own home and how you have to do it. Yeah. And then they're talking about expanding the red flag bill even further than it already has. And we were told how important that was and how we had to have it. And it's been in effect for a year now. And there's only been four cases that have even been brought up on it. And three of them were pretty much non-existent yeah it's it's uh it's very frustrating and, and this is again this is my opinion not the, the radio station or bales but this is just my opinion I, I think um we spend so much time trying to legislate hate and you really can't legislate hate that's a problem you have to fix with the families with your god with with uh mental health i mm-hmm. mean if if uh again if we threw the money like you know I, i'd love to see mental health funding get Front, like the Susan G. Coleman breast cancers and we're all wearing ribbons and run around doing big fundraising events and raising billions of dollars for mental health research. If we could shift our attention that way, instead of trying to, to determine if a gun stock is legal or illegal or how many exactly. bullets you're allowed to have in a gun or, or I mean, that's, that's all shenanigans, semantics. Um, the, the person that's got evil in their heart, they will kill you with a spoon. They exactly. don't care if it's an AR 15 or, or, uh, or 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 a nine millimeter pistol. They don't care. Exactly. Um, and so they've they, they've too busy got us worrying about who can buy what and where for what and how what kind of damage they can do where. And it's like no no no. You need to fix the person behind the the, the trigger, not not the trigger. The yeah. Trigger's working just fine. It's 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 the person behind it. Uh, and that's the problem we need to address. And and they're going to try to shift you into taking your guns away instead of where the 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 onus needs to be on let's figure out where mental health is and let's get better about this. And um, anything that, that that goes against that, I'm sure that's where your organization steps in and says, no, no, no. And well, so, and again, you know, you talk about things like that. Just imagine for a minute, all these anti-gun laws do nothing to protect or to hurt the criminals. All they do is hurt law-abiding citizens. So mm-hmm. just imagine if we took all the money that we spend passing all these laws, trying to enforce all these ridiculous laws, most of these laws do absolutely nothing. What if we took all that money and we put it toward training? Yeah. And we go back to where we teach our kids in school how to properly handle a gun. Even if you don't want to own a gun, a kid could be exposed to somebody else's houses. What if we put all that money into training? Just think how much better off we would be. Sure. But it's a tool like anything it else. Is. And uh, and to be honest, and I know, because and guns a macho thing. Let's face it. You know, there, there, there's a, a whole subset of gun owners and they want to make them look cool as possible, oh, exactly. and 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 uh, which is awesome, you know, for their own personal things. But people misunderstand, and they think a cool looking gun is now uh, like some kind of uh, commando assault rifle from 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 the movies. You know what I yeah. mean? And it's like, okay, I fixed up my shotgun. Yeah, it does look like some kind of military assault <laughs> rifle, but it's just a shotgun. I just like to look, and you know, it's no different than these people that go out here and buy. Uh, 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 a little four cylinder car, and then they go put ground effects and a wing on it, and all that. I'm like, you really think your four cylinder car needs a wing? Exactly. Come on now, it's no different. No. It's the same thing. So, and and you have the right to do whatever you want, to, and, and and so should people with their guns and things too. I personally look at you like, all right, that's a little overkill, but you do you, yeah. you know, but. As long as you're within the law, exactly, you should be left alone. It's a, it, it, that's all that is. That's all that is. Is yeah. is just people trying to make their stuff cool and all that. It, it doesn't impact the the less or more dangerous factor of the gun. It's still the same. And again, <laughs> these gun laws do actually do nothing to deter crime. Yeah, just, but but they try to sell you this stuff like this is stuff. the problem. Yeah, and and yeah. that's the and and and, and instead of they they're just putting band aids on things instead of fixing they trying are. to fix the actual cause. Of the problem here, and, and at the end of the day, it's not a gun problem; it's a yeah. mental health problem. We've got to fix that. The guns work just fine. Exactly, there's nothing wrong with them. It's the people, and and you know what? We have laws on place to prevent people that should not own guns exactly. own guns. They are in place. We just have to enforce utilize them. them and enforce them. Yes. Instead of creating new ones that aren't enforceable or or, or aren't, um, and that's just it too. They can make mandates like. Well, we're going to make guns illegal, and the cops are going to come and take your guns. Cops don't have the, the the manpower or the force or even the facilities to do something like that. So even if they made that law, there's no way in God's green earth they can 
enforce it. Yeah, our great sheriff here tried to convince the legislature of that last session too. And yeah. of course he was ignored. But. Yeah. So it's it's it doesn't make sense and and you need to think uh, from that perspective when you talk about this kind of stuff and that's where this organization kind of right you know let's make the playing field level here exactly and, and make it right for everybody so all right all right well, let's talk about the fun stuff yeah on a happier note let's uh talk a little bit about the shooting opportunities we have in roswell before yeah. i get to our highlighted event is a, a new shooting sport we've got here but we're fortunate enough here to have four gun clubs and we have a cowboy club here where okay. everybody pretty much knows what cowboy action shooting is now and we shoot Wild Bunch on Saturdays, the first Saturday of the month, and Cowboy on the first Sunday of the month. Mm -hmm. And then right next to it, we have a, a trap club that we've, I've been in here talking to you about it before. That was the event I think That's you're thinking was, of. We I, talking, I was yeah. putting on a clinic to teach kids how to shoot. Yeah. And we have that. Uh, we, we're shooting right now uh, at 9 o'clock on Sundays. Okay. When it cools down, we'll go back to 1 o'clock on Sundays. Okay. We have uh, the ski club next to it where we can shoot skeet on Saturdays at nine o'clock for now. And then eventually probably this after Labor Day, it'll go to one o'clock again, two in the afternoon. Okay. That's where we have the, uh, new event I'm going to talk about. And then across the highway, we have the Roswell gun club, which has a lot of shooting opportunities. There some unique things like military cast bullet, where you can shoot a 1903 with oh, a cast cool. bullet and bowling pin shooting. We, we don't have that going right now, but we've got silhouette shooting, uh, 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 steel challenge the whole nine yards so basically we're in a kind of a mecca here that's one of the reasons i stayed here when i retired i didn't know if i was going to stay in roswell okay. but, we've got but you're like hey so everything much, i'm into is right here yeah, so, yeah. so much you all kinds of shooting events and also uh coming up in october we're registering kids for 4-h so i don't want to shoot forget the 4-h shooting they have an excellent for, shooting sports program yeah absolutely. so i'm the shotgun coach and the pistol coach we have rifle archery so if you got kids that want to shoot and are interested in that, uh, like I say, October is a sign-up month. We'll start shooting in November, and we, we shoot pretty much year-round. Yeah. Call so. the, the Chavis County Extension Office. Uh, exactly. Uh, Andrea, Andrea over there. She she handles all the 4-H uh, things. So, And if, if shooting sports isn't a thing, but you love computers or leather work or, or uh, obviously livestock and stuff, 4-H has plenty of opportunities for all, for all of and and you can do multiple too. So even if you're into firearms, but you're also into computers, you join both clubs. Go exactly. go, go shoot oh, yeah. guns on oh, one yeah. day and go do computers a another lot, day. A lot you know? of them do that too. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. it's a great organization. It is. There it really too. is. And old John here's the the guy that makes sure that you're shooting safely and learning the the right way to do these. Yep, things. and that's important. Is the I I think uh, if we get our youth taught right. At an early age, then we won't have all these problems that we have. I don't want to get into another rabbit hole here because I, I don't want to give you time to tell everything. But to me, that's that's the that's the the microcosm of America that 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 interaction between parent and child in firearm world, and you know, it's like fishing or any yeah. you know. I know particularly for guys, but not necessarily. I mean, it's it's anybody, but but that's uh, how many young men or old men for that matter, can then sit there and say, how did you connect with your dad? And it's always generally working on a car or going hunting together or going fishing together. It's those moments where dad's teaching you the ways of the gun, teaching the ways yeah. to hunt, teaching how to, to, to put that fly on that reel on that, on that rod there and do that or how to swap out that carburetor. That's, that's, or that, I can still remember the first gun my dad gave yeah, me. Yeah. And that's exactly. The big one. How many people, Remember yeah. that. And your first gun, and they show you how to clean it and show you how to, to, to store it and all the things that, uh, you know, you, you when you're big-eyed and you own your first firearm and all yeah. that, that's, that, that's America, and that's, 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 that's the proper firearm, exactly. the way you do it. You use it. It's, a, it's, 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 it's no a tool. different than, like, when Dad gets you that first watch or that first, yeah. you know, those, the gun is that, that in that same category to me. Teaches that heirloom, kids sentimental. respect. It teaches them responsibility, eye hand, high hand, or, uh, eye hand coordination. Absolutely. And you look at your kids that are raised up in that environment, shooting other things too, and they're, they're polite, mm -hmm. they're good. And like I say, we should be teaching, in a young age, we should be teaching our kids about firearms in school, and then half of these problems we have would not even occur. I really think um, it, it plays an integral role in helping teach problem-solving skills and things exactly. like that because um, obviously when it comes to firearm teaching uh, anybody how to safely use and, and own a firearm, 
Um, it's very safety heavy laden. I mean, before you do anything with a firearm, they're going safety. With exactly. It. You don't, you don't get to look at it. You don't get to smell it. You don't get to touch it. Nothing until we talk safety about and this gun. And we stress that very hard, especially mm-hmm. if you, for H, if you're worried about your kids, safety is up most importance. Yeah. It's taught, it's enforced. And, and we've never had an accident, shooting accident in Chavez County with our four H kids whatsoever. Yeah. So. But I think because. It's taught that way and everything. I think it kind of ingrains that. It, 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 it shows the student, hey, this is serious business here. Um, I need to respect it because because it's going to be an invaluable tool. But if you don't respect it, like anything else you don't respect, you're going to pay for it. And they like it. They like it. And when you give them that responsibility, they look up at you and they smile and they yeah. know they can shoot. They know they're safe. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just a good good opportunity. Yeah. And then everybody. they have their first successes blowing yep. up a dust in a pigeon or or putting five shots in the size of a dime in a, on a target or yeah. something when they have those moments um then then the bugs in and they're going on to, to try to go bigger and stronger and do more with it yeah, we, had, we had one of our four eight shooters shoot a, their first 25 not too long ago and what i do out there is i take their hat and put it in a water bottle and tape it up and i throw it up in the air and everybody shoots it and then I, I pulled a trick on this last kid. I had the last two shooters not to shoot till it hit the ground to make sure it had plenty of holes in it. That kid that's, was so proud of that hat. That's cool. Because he shot his first 25 out of 25. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I love, and they love those things. That's, oh, they do. I don't know what, when I was in the scouts and um, uh, way back when I was a kid, and uh, one of the opportunities I got to do was go to a, a high adventure camping base, a hiking and all that. Oh, yeah. But we went to a Mount Man outpost and uh, they taught us black powder. Oh wow! And that was a lot of fun, but they would let us put our bandanas and stuff up on the thing and blow up our bandanas. So that by the time we had hats <laughs> with with a bunch of yeah. black powder holes and shots and you know all that's that. a trophy, pretty, wasn't yeah, it? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's, I very much know about yeah. that, what you're talking about. It's pretty cool. It's so. fun, but... Good deal. So so uh, talk about some of these other events and fundraisers. Okay, and this too. is I, the highlight of it. Now I get our, sidetracked a lot. That's all right. <laughs> at our ski club, we have uh, added a new event, and we, two of our members. Uh, Kendall Joyce and Chuck Weaver have worked tirelessly and effortly on this, but we have built a five-stand shotgun course. Cool. And I know a lot of people don't know what that is, but it's very similar to sporting clays. Yeah. Only you, you shoot in a what we call a cage, and the only it's not really a cage. It's just to protect you from swinging your shotgun gotcha. too it's far. Kind of like a batter's box. You see yeah, the batter's exactly. box kind of thing. Yeah. So we're having our grand opening for that event on September 6th, and – we're trying to get everybody we can out there, kids, adults, everybody okay. else. There'll be instruction. Uh, we're going to introduce people to five-stand shooting, which is very unique. You've got targets coming straight at yeah. you. You've got targets coming over your head. you got targets crosswise. For for adults it's, that grew up around my age, think of it as duck hunt, the old computer duck hunt game on yeah, steroids. Exactly, here. <laughs> exactly. But it's real life. Yep. Uh, we're going to provide... Uh, uh, lunch for you. I want to make sure I got the time right. It's going to start at 10 o'clock. Uh, it's uh, going to be $6 a round to shoot. You okay. need to bring your own shotgun shells, nothing over seven and a half uh, lead size. Okay. Um, like I say, we'll run you through it and everything else. We're, we're going to also have skeet that day, okay. snooker skeet, which is a fun game with different colored targets that – Okay. They have points, so it's just a great day to Is come out. Is it kind out. of involved some of like the rules of snooker too involved with that? Or the no, old, okay. I don't, you know I don't really know why they call it snooker okay. ski, but basically I maybe it involved because yeah, I don't know all the rules, but it's kind of like a bumper pool version. Yeah, snooker. but there's colors involved too, so that's how yeah, like, maybe you, like it, we got a green target. Uh, if you hit it, it's a certain amount of points. A pink target, we've got a, what we call a, an exploding target. Oh, it's cool! Basically, got powder in the top of it and makes a big explosion. It's a lot of fun, a lot of bragging rights available it is. there. Yeah, it cool. is. So we're hoping to get a lot of people out there to try this five stand event and certainly join the club if you haven't already. And I would also invite uh, folks that maybe don't have a firearm or anything, but you're interested in the sport, come out anyway. Come mm-hmm. talk to because you're going to have a lot of people that are fully invested into the sport. And if you want to get expert advice on, you know, where to start, how to do, what to buy, where to go, you've got, well, 
Pardon the pun, you can throw a rock and hit an expert at that place. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so if you're if you're listening and saying, you know what, this is something I would like to get into shooting yep. sports, or you know what, let's do it together. I've always wanted to do this. Let me get my 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 child here, and we're going to do it together, uh, and and do it this way. But please, if you're wanting to do that. I'm sure you're going to meet a bunch of fine people that would love to to kind of help you out and give you a, an opportunity to to learn more about the sport. And exactly. who knows, a year from now, you're at the event teaching some new person how to how to how to enjoy the well, sport. And that's too. actually happened a lot. We've had a lot of people that just drop by just to see what it's all about. They watch for a while, and then they get interested. And almost any of us will let you borrow a shotgun if yeah. you want to try it or whatever. And some of our sh- Biggest shooters now started that sure. way. Sure, and I highly recommend you if you're interested in getting in the sport, or maybe you want to take up hunting and things. And when you when it comes to buying a shotgun and thing, you know, because there's so many options out there, and so many ways you can either overkill it or underkill it on that. As far as uh, what to buy and what what gauges and things. And if you're new and experienced, I mean, uh, you, a lot of those factors come in on one you should purchase as far exactly. as a firearm, and and especially in the shotgun world because there's so many gauges and and uh, different the choke settings and things that that um, I mean there's standard ones that kind of work for a lot of things, but if you're getting into this and you're wanting to get more specific in your hunting targets or the types of skeets or contest you're in there's there's different there's different all kinds. ammo for different scenarios and and uh you'll learn all that but uh that but before you going out and buying all that stuff without knowing what you're really buying let's let's get you talking to some people and say hey while you're starting out let's go with a maybe it's a 20 gauge maybe it's a semi-automatic instead of a, a bolt or something more more complicated you know uh, things like that that's the kind of conversations you have. exactly because you're right you know there's over and under shotguns or semi-autos some work better for certain events, yeah. Uh, for example, some people like to shoot an over and under because they reload and they don't have to pick their shells up off the ground. Exactly. Uh, there's all kinds of factors in that, and and depending on what you want to shoot, you know, I mean, some people I don't know who they are, not <laughs> have two or three shotguns. You know, a gun for trap, a gun uh-huh. for skeet, a gun, and it's you not. You're not speaking from experience. No, here. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I don't know more than two or three guns. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's that's the. It's just like. Any, it's like golf or any other sport, you know. It, it's, yeah, pick your club. <laughs> you get the right equipment for the right job here, and then, and then, uh, you know, I, I would imagine, especially in skeet and trap shooting, like swing gets into play, and how you, you know, oh, your definitely. stance and how you know your follow through. All of, I mean, it's it's just as important. You know how important your swing is in golf. I imagine it's equally important in in trap and ski shoots. Oh, shoot very important. Like in fact, when I teach the first eight, the four H kids that have never touched a gun in their life, in mm-hmm. some cases, after we go through all the safety aspects and everything else, that's where we start. Is your stance? I tell them your your feet and your stance are just like the foundation of a house. Yeah. If you don't get that right, nothing else is going to stand, or nothing's sure. going to work, or nothing's going to last. But even like how you sight in or look, because. Uh, like I remember when I was a kid, they said you never aim a shotgun. Exactly. You point a shotgun, yeah, exactly. you aim a rifle. Exactly. And uh, and that's and 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 there's a difference there. You, I mean, yeah, there's a bead on the shotgun, but you don't treat it like you would a, a bead on a rifle. For you know, it's just not the same. And that's where you learn all this stuff. <laughs> I can stand behind <laughs> these kids for, as a matter of fact, I can tell by the way they're moving their shotgun if they're a rifle shooter or not. Because <laughs> your rifle shooters, they want to. Yeah, they want to get that, that sight picture. jerking because they're trying to aim rather yeah. than point. They're trying gotta, to get a sight picture like they would in a yeah. rifle, and you, and that's not the same. Yeah, remind them. Yeah. You point a shotgun and you uh, and you uh, aim a gun, and also the trigger. You know, when you're over there shooting a pistol, yeah, you gotta you're squeeze, squeeze it. and when you're you jerk that bad that boy shotgun, on a shotgun, you pull it. It's almost <laughs> the opposite of everything. It, it really is. is. It's kind of but it's that's a, sport. That's shooting sports. It's that's a mindset. A you know, it's for me. I've got to think a lot of times what I'm doing because you know, ninety percent of shooting is right right here in your head yeah and if people uh lose that they lost everything so sometimes you gotta sit there and say okay i'm shooting a shotgun today or sure no i'm shooting a rifle don't don't jerk that trigger yeah well and then like like you said in the mental picture i, I think shotgun's a little more forgiving because it's it's kind of like the philosophy of pitching just lean back and throw it you know kind of <laughs> thing where rifle i mean you got to control your breathing your sight i mean it's it's yeah. more of a uh a thing of skill or a thing of precision where you're like, okay, I want the environment just <laughs> right. I'm trying to win. I mean, you're you're literally doing all. Where shotgun is like, 
point at that sucker and blow it up, man. That's yeah. what you did. That's how you shotgun. You're shoot. exactly right, but you'd be surprised how easy it is to miss oh, with a I, shotgun I'm sometimes. Say, <laughs> I, I, I've seen a lot of clay pigeons just lie unbroken on the ground here. Don't get me wrong; yeah. it's not easy, but as far as yeah. the concept and it stuff, is, it is. It is. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell. If, you're, if you go out dove hunting and you get a limited dove with 25 shells, you're an excellent shotgun yeah, shooter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost, it can be that way sometimes with five stand. Cause like I say, you've got targets coming all different directions, all sure. different heights, different colored targets. Yeah. So it, it's really fun. Yeah. It's a I blast. Guess it's just like, it's like, um, a golf, like, uh, or golf for people that it's like shotgun, like, Rifle's more of the sophisticated side of golf, where um, shotgun's more of the putt putt, and you know what I mean, going to have fun. Like I feel like rifle shooting's more of the sophisticated, like because it's a bigger skill set. Whereas uh, uh, shotgun is like, hey, just settle down and let's let it rip, you know, kind of thing. So I think the mentalities are different. Yeah, shotgun folks and rifle. Folks. Sometimes it is, and same, same with pistol and rifle shooters, but we all got to stick together. Absolutely. Because it's all one one shooting sport. And, and, and what's the date again for the, for the podcast? September 6th, this coming Monday. This coming uh, Labor Day. Labor Day. Labor Day uh, it's going to be our Labor Day grand opening. Like I say, lunch will be provided. Bring your own shotgun shells. Make sure you got earplugs and safety glasses. And uh, come out and have fun. Very good. It's going to be a good day. Anybody... Uh, if anybody's any questions, is there a phone number or anything they can call? They can call me at 575-626-3974. 3974. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, we will uh, see you next time here. And come out be a part of the, the, the event. And, and if folks, if you want to be a member, like I said, they need a lot of money to, to kind of refill the coffers after fighting the legislature this last session. Um, please learn more about being a member. Give out that website one more time. It's New Mexico Shooting Sports Association dot org. N N M S S A dot org. N M S S A dot org. Yeah, New Mexico Shooting Sports Association. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, sir. Well, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. It's always fun talking to you. Uh, we always love talking to you as well, too. And uh, we'll see you next time. Okay? All right. Thanks, All Mike. right. Don't. Uh, and congratulations on fifty. Oh, thank you. Don't. Um, don't make my make the missus too mad now. You know? <laughs> I'll try not to. Like you said, she's packing. <laughs> Although after fifty years, I think you figured it out. You don't need my advice. I could probably use some from you. <laughs> uh, maybe so. <laughs> Take care, sir. All we'll right, see you thank there. you very much.